The story of a boy who cried wolf is a sad and a sorrowful tale. This is Aesop's fable of the boy who cried wolf. In olden days, every boy had to have a job. Paul's job was watching his father's sheep and the sheep of the other farmers in his village. He would take them to the sheep meadow on the mountainside to graze. If any sheep strayed, Paul would have to say, Hey, come back here. Each morning, his father told him, Many wolves live in the forest. They prey on sheep. If you ever see or hear anything that looks like a wolf, call out quickly so we can come and kill it. For many days, Paul kept a watchful eye out for wolves. But after a while, he became so restless, he couldn't sit still. I wish a great big wolf would pounce out of the forest right now and pounce on one of these sheep. Well, then we'd have some excitement, all right. Anyway, how do I know they could hear me way down the mountainside if there really was a wolf? I'd better find out. So without a wolf in sight, Paul shouted, Wolf! Wolf! Help! A wolf is attacking the sheep! Wolf! Wolf! Isn't that the boy crying wolf? Help! Wolf! Wolf! Where's the wolf? There's a boy, quick! Which way did the wolf go? How many sheep did the wolf steal? <laughs> trick! Trick! There's no wolf. All you sheep are here. I was just trying out my voice to see if you could hear me. The boy lied. Better never do that again, boy. His father told him, Son, if you ever lie again, I'll beat you. A few days passed, and Paul was more bored than ever. Just to amuse himself, he began to say, very softly, of course, Wolf! Wolf! They won't be able to hear me if I yell it softly toward the woods. Wolf! Wolf! Secretly, Paul hoped the men would hear him. He loved excitement, even though he knew he wasn't telling the truth, because there wasn't a wolf in sight. Wolf! 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 I hear the boy crying, wolf! Wolf! And all the farmers rush once more to the sheep pasture on the mountainside. There's no wolf. I was just playing. I didn't think you would be able to hear me. He lied again! We must replace this boy tomorrow! Can't be trusted. Tonight, my son, I shall spank you thoroughly. That afternoon, the farmers heard Paul shouting again. Wolf! Wolf! Come quick! He's eating the sheep! Hurry! There goes that fool boy again. Don't pay any attention to him! He's playing again! I must spank that boy like he's never been spanked before. Wolf! Wolf! But this time, a huge wolf really was attacking the sheep. Paul was frozen with fear. Finally, he tore himself away, ran down the hill. There really is a wolf this time. Please! But nobody would believe him. Meanwhile, the wolf killed every sheep in the pasture and dragged many of them away. And it all happened because once people think you are a liar, oh, oh, they will never listen to anything you tell them, even though it is the truth. This is Aesop's fable of the boastful wind and the wise old sun. Now the wind can be very strong when it wants to. Seems like the wind is always trying to prove just how strong it is. Shrieking and howling and making people's windows rattle. Doors fly open and shut. Making people's hats fly off. The blustery, noisy wind is pretty proud of himself. In fact, once way back in history, the wind grew tired of just playing tricks on people and said, I am the strongest thing in all the world. I dare anything or anyone to show that it's stronger than I, the wind. He huffed and huffed and raged and howled. But nobody or nothing came around and told him they were stronger. Finally, like so many braggarts and show off too, the wind went looking for trouble. He asked the rain, 
Can you prove you're stronger than I? Oh, no, Mr. Wynn. You're stronger. Said the rain, crying a little. What do you say, Cloud? Do you think you're stronger than I? Oh, no, no. That's better. I haven't time to waste with you, Wind, said the moon. I'm strong enough to pull the tides up twice a day. Howard. Finally, the wind got around to the bright and wide and warm old sun. Will you test your strength against mine? How the wind? This wind has been going around, boasting and bothering every part of nature for too long. Let me give him a chance to show exactly how strong he is. I'll accept your challenge. The wind hissed and howled with silly glee. <laughs> you warm-hearted old weakling. I'll show you. Now, in which way do you wish to test your strength against mine? Said the sun, still smiling. Anyway, you mellow old fool. Any way at all. No, you pick it. All right. <laughs> see that traveler all alone down there? Let's see who can take off his coat the fastest. <laughs> Want to go first? No. You go. All right. Watch this. The wind swooped down on the poor traveler and slapped his face. Shook his bones. Swept up his coat. All the time hissing and laughing at the top of his voice. The wind grabbed up dust and pebbles and threw them in the traveler's eyes. No. He's all turned around and upset. I'll just blow his coat right off. But the traveler had gathered his coat around himself and buttoned it firmly. He held it close so the wind could not get underneath. The wind kept pounding at the traveler almost all day. But the traveler wouldn't let the wind get his coat off. So much effort. Even the wind was tired and out of breath by this time. I doubt if anything can force the coat off that stubborn fellow. And then the sun said, Now, watch me. He poured out his warmth on the lonely traveler. The traveler was tired and cold from his battle with the wind. He was so pleased to have the sun come shine on him for a while. Soon it got so warm, he slipped off his coat and sat down. The sun looked at the wind. I must admit it. You are the stronger of the two of us. But I still don't know how you did it. The sun was so sure of its own strength, it used warmth and kindness to get what it wanted. Because all the force in the world can't make a person do what he doesn't want to do. Do you know what a crow is? A crow is a bird that looks like this. It was some years ago. It was terribly, terribly dry. It hadn't rained a drop for months, for months, for months. Oh, it were dry. It was
Day after day, crows searched for water. All the watering places were dry. The few wells were closely guarded. Crow didn't dare get near. Finally, Crow was just about to give up and die, the way so many of his crow friends had done already. Oh, let me tell it from here. I thought to myself, I'll just have one more look around the town. I'm not quite ready to give up yet. And so it did. Sure enough, in the backyard of one of the town's merchants, I found some water. Not much water, but water. I could see it in the bottom of a pitcher. I stuck in my beak, but it was still a long way from the tip of the beak to the little bit of water that lay at the bottom of that pitcher. What to do? I didn't want to tip the pitcher. I might spill all the water out on the ground and not touch a drop. I didn't want to leave the water. Someone else would get it. Or it would evaporate in the sun, like the other water had. And I would die. Suddenly, I saw the answer. A pile of pebbles in one corner of the garden. Tired as I was, I picked the top one up and tripped it over and dropped it in the pitcher. And then Crow went over and took another pebble, and another, and another. Tired and half dead as he was, Crow kept taking pebbles to the pitcher all that day until... Finally, the water brimmed up over the pebbles so that Crow could get a few sips, just enough to give him strength. Quickly, Crow filled in with more pebbles. Now he could get a good drink. And that very night... you say is the moral of this fable, Crow? Well, little by little, we'll bring you what you want. If you think like a crow, and always keep looking till you find it, and never, never, never give up.